What's up guys, it's Bromley from Empire Barbell. Today I wanna to talk about deadlift setup and specifically I wanna talk about one setup that people often misinterpret. Now if you've been around long enough, you've seen people use a bunch of different deadlift setups. Some guys will set their hips very high and jerk into the bar. Other guys will squat down very low and take the bar with them as they come up. Uh, if you've seen a lot of the heavier guys, especially a lot of equipped guys, you've seen the roll technique, which is where they push the bar out in front and then roll back as they set into position. So if you've never really been exposed to it, you might wonder what's with the bar roll? Why do people do that as part of their setup? Does it help? Is it cheating? Does it rely on momentum? What's the deal? So the controversial point that comes up is, first of all, is whether or not it actually does use momentum. You'll hear people give just a knee jerk reaction to say, oh, well, an object in motion tends to stay in motion. So first things first, it absolutely does not capitalize on, on momentum. You cannot take horizontal momentum along the x-axis and have that transfer into vertical momentum unless you have some other force or object acting on it. So if you're thinking of, I don't know, pulley or a, a pendulum is a good example. Uh, you have this other force that is causing something that's moving horizontally to be swung upwards. It's, it's part of how you do a kipping pull-up is you're fixed to the bar, you're using your horizontal momentum through the attachment of your arms to swing out and upwards. That doesn't happen during a deadlift. The main reason that people roll the bar when they deadlift is because they're very big or they're very bound and they have a hard time getting down to the ground. So if you imagine that I'm a Ray Williams or a Robert Wilkerson or an Eddie Hall and I have a 52 inch waist and I'm trying to get down to the bar, I'm gonna have a hard time because there's a lot of compression here. Even if I'm just wearing a deadlift suit, the fact is coming down to the bar, I'm gonna be up against a couple hundred pounds of of pressure. Imagine that I'm trying to resist 200 pounds of force just to be able to get to my hand, get my hands to the bar. Can you push 200 pounds of force down to the ground just by hip flexion in the standing position? Probably not. So when you're in a really tight deadlift suit or you're so big that that compression prevents you from getting to the bar, starting with the bar away from you can help you get into position by rolling the bar back into that compression. So right now you're tight and you're in a position you wouldn't be able to get into just by coming straight down into the bar. So bigger squatters, guys like uh, Wilkerson was a good example. He's a thousand pound raw squatter. His deadlift, I believe, was somewhere in the 600 range. When you have that much body fat around you, you know, fat doesn't, it's incompressible. You know, fat doesn't move, it's not stretchy, it's not elastic. So when you have this belt of body fat, that actually aids you coming down into the squat. It's like a built-in squat suit. It's one of the reasons you'll see really, really heavy squatters uh, pull a lot less than they squat because they don't get the assistance of the compression in the deadlift. In fact, just the opposite, they might have a much harder time getting into position because they're so big. So rolling is one method guys get, get into it. Now, aside from that, is you do get a bit of, of tightness or engagement from your posterior if you time it right. So there's people that by starting with their arms forward and rolling back, they get this lat movement that helps lock their lats in and tie it into their obliques and their hips. So we get this bracing effect. So by getting your lats in tight and squeezing, by getting that receptivity of your lats, the sensation might be that you're tighter and that you're better braced at the start of a, a deadlift. That is entirely personal preference. For a lot of people, they start training a certain way because they saw somebody do it, they train that way for so long, and then eventually they're good at doing that just because they practiced it so long. That doesn't necessarily mean it's actually better or more efficient. Psychologically, it's better. It's something you're used to. It's a cue that helps you get into a good position to do the lift the way you need to do it. Now, as far as the myth of momentum, when I roll the bar and deadlift, Notice I'm rolling the bar, the bar's moving completely horizontally. By the time it gets to my shins, it has to stop and then move vertically. So what you have is a very sharp right angle. Okay, so when something's rolling, you know, it's Newton's first law. An object in motion tends to stay in motion. That means in a straight fucking line. Now on planet Earth, things don't tend to move in a straight line because we have gravity that's constantly pulling things down, right? So if you throw a ball, the ball doesn't just keep going straight. Gravity is affecting that ball and pulling it to the ground. But if you were in space and you throw a ball, that ball would leave tangent to the arc of your arm and it would continue to go in a straight line until it got acted on by another force. So 
a bar rolling flat across the ground, it has the tendency to keep moving straight until something stops it. The fact is you have to accelerate the bar and then you have to stop the bar. So by the time the bar gets to that point where it's back up right against your shin, ready to pull, there is zero upward momentum and you still have to break it from a dead stop. So that horizontal momentum does absolutely not transfer into vertical momentum at all. So whatever sense of tightness you get from rolling first and then deadlifting, that moment right here, it's the exact same as if I were to pull it from a dead stop. The physics are not any different. For that momentum to be directed upward, the body would have to be under tension and somehow swinging the bar back and up. Notice that as you're rolling the bar from right here, 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 the body's absolutely not under tension, not at all. In fact, you're not under tension until the second it hits the shins and you push through the ground. So there is absolutely no opportunity for that momentum to be redirected upward. A, a deadlift, it's not a swinging motion. At no point do you turn the bar into a weight at the end of a pendulum. That's not how, that's not how any of this works, all right? So anyways, that's a small myth that I hear thrown around a lot. People reflexively say, object of motion tends to stay in motion. Yeah, in a straight line, okay, not at right angles. Okay, there's a reason that we can't drive vehicles like you see in Tron, right? Or people that talk about UFOs, they talk about unnatural motion. They see objects in the sky moving at sharp right angles. If you're driving 60 miles an hour, you can't cut a sharp right angle because that's the same as hitting a brick wall, right? You still have to, in that axis, you still have to stop from 60 miles an hour to zero in a split second, which will kill you. And you still have to accelerate from zero miles an hour in this vector to 60 miles an hour. So traveling at sharp right angles is impossible. So anyways, that's your physics lesson for today. I hope you learned something from it. Till next time, this is Bromley at Empire Barbell.